please start. Okay, thanks. Okay, so today is my uh, last lecture and I have to talk about uh, that. I'm, I'm going to talk about the double affine braid group. Uh, So I'll uh, basically follow the construction in uh, McDonald. This is given in chapter uh, 3.3 and 3.4, I guess. And then I'll explain what it looks like for uh, GLN, uh, which, is, uh, which is in the paper of uh, uh, Ram and Go that I, uh, that I cited last time. Okay, so to construct uh, uh, these double affine break groups, Uh, we we need to basically work with two root systems. We need to uh, work with uh, two root systems and uh, say R and R prime and a pair of lattices in them. Uh, in in V. Okay, so so for that I will introduce some notation. So let uh, let R be a, as before. Let R be a, a reduced uh, reducible uh, finite root system. And in, in V. And let. Uh, P, P check, Q, Q check, uh, um, B as before. Uh, these are the, uh, the uh, root lattice, the weight lattice, the co-root and the co-weight lattices. And uh, um, yeah, so let uh, alpha I, I in I naught be a basis. Uh, so this is uh, um, this amounts to choosing a, a, a while chamber, a basis of R, and uh, uh, let theta be the highest root. Um, of R relative to this basis, and then normalize the scalar product. on V so that uh, uh, phi, uh, theta square is two, that is theta check is theta. Okay, so the pairs we will consider are the following. Uh, the pairs are uh, uh, S, S prime, R, R prime, and a pair of lattices L and L prime, uh, uh, where uh, uh, S equals S of R. This is the, uh, uh, yeah. So last time the notation I had for this was RA, the affine root system coming from this finite root system, uh, RA. And uh, S prime is S of R dual. R prime is R dual. Uh, L is P and L prime is P check. So then, then S has a basis. Um, um, AI, I and I with the uh, AI equals alpha I for, for I not equal to zero and um, Um, and A naught is minus theta plus C, where the C was this constant function equal to one. And S prime has a uh, basis uh, AI prime, I and I, where AI prime is alpha I check, uh, I in I naught, and uh, a naught prime is, I guess, minus xi check plus C, where xi uh, uh, is the highest short root of R. Uh, 
uh, actually, okay. So if maybe let me re relabel this, let me call this fee because McDonald calls this fee and uh, uh, the 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 highest short root is uh, Zai. So let me just stick to the notation. Last time I had used theta for the highest root. So I've, I've changed that to Zai, okay. Zai, highest short root of R. Okay, this is one case. And uh, uh, the second case is uh, um, S equals S prime uh, equals S. Sorry, yeah. uh, I'm a little confused about the notation. So R is the finite root system or R is this affine root system? Is this no, R is the, yeah, R is a finite root system. S so far is the affine root system. Uh -huh, I yes, used... hey, oh, S is not a set of simple roots or anything. Okay, okay, okay. But Sorry, got... there is a change in notation because this time I have to work with two root systems simultaneously. So if I stick to the notation that I had last time, it was becoming messy. So I'm changing a few things today. But, okay, thank you. S is itself a root system. I got it. Thank yeah, you. S is SOFR is the affine root system. Thank you. You're right. Last time I had S and S naught to denote the set of uh, finite simple reflections and affine simple reflections. Right? I, I think that is the problem, but, uh, but uh, I'm not using... Yeah, yeah, yes. When I see yes, I think of simple. So thanks. Sorry, thanks. I'm sorry yeah. about... Yeah. No, no, that's, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, because I couldn't figure out a way of writing this with my old notation, so I just had to switch the notation to McDonald. Okay. So, okay. So, S is S of R. S and S prime are S of R dual and r prime is r and uh, l equals l prime equals p check uh, okay so actually to be to be honest i did not discuss this type of root system at all in the lecture right I, uh, th this is not necessarily equal to s of uh, i okay so maybe let me make that comment later but uh, let me finish what i wanted to say okay so this is um, and s has basis um, ai I in I, where uh, where A I equals alpha I check and uh, I in I naught and uh, and A naught is uh, minus uh, phi plus C. Okay, so um, uh, okay, so one comment I want to make is uh, I, we did not discuss. We did not discuss uh, 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 root systems of the type uh, root systems like uh, S of R dual, uh, where uh, um, R is a finite root system. So, for instance, one remark is uh, one remark is S of R dual need not be equal to S of R prime dual for, for any root system R prime. Uh, for In fact, I can just say this as, yeah. So uh, in general, S of R dual is not equal to S of, uh, yeah, this is not true in general. An example to keep in mind is G2 and G2 dual. They are, they are two different root systems. They are two different affine root systems. And G2 dual, G2 dual is not equal to S of G2. Okay, so uh, you cannot always obtain the obtain root systems like this from by using integer translates of a finite root system. So I think uh, so. In any case, I did not discuss root systems of this kind of kind two. So although the the discussion today will hold for kind two, if there are uh, uh, members here who have not seen this, then you can just work with uh, type one. For example, the GLN case I am going to discuss will will fall into type one. Okay. Um, okay, and so and for 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 each uh, for each alpha in R, let uh, alpha prime be either uh, let, let alpha prime. This is either alpha or alpha check. Be the because as you see, R is a R prime is either R or R dual. So alpha prime is either alpha or alpha dual, be the corresponding element of uh, of R prime, and then uh, then um, then by the way we have set things up, lambda prime alpha, 
and uh, lambda alpha prime are integers for uh, lambda in l for all lambda in l uh, um, lambda prime in l prime and uh, alpha in r okay because l is either the uh, l is either the weight lattice or yeah l is either the weight lattice or its dual so for, in both these cases these properties are satisfied and alpha is a root or a or a co root so so these things hold true okay and um, let uh, omega we had this last time this is l prime mod q check uh, we know that, i mean this is in all the cases we have this is uh, p check mod q check okay and also uh, let uh, let uh, l l prime be the set of all uh, lambda lambda prime such that lambda in l and lambda prime in l prime and uh, then then this uh, is uh, say e inverse z for some for some e right so for example for uh, for gln for gl uh, for gln this e is n okay um okay so for gln um, r prime is r and uh, uh, yeah i am in type 1 here r prime uh, yeah r dual is basically isomorphic to r and from there you see that uh, l and l prime is basically the pairing between p and p check which is uh, which is n okay and recall that uh, recall that we had the extended affine while group which is uh, w0 semi direct product with t of l prime note that in the two cases that we are L prime is P check. Okay. Uh, I have ignored the case C and dual C N where there are some subtleties, but you can refer to McDonald if you're interested in that case. Okay, so this is the extended affine while group that we looked at last time. And dually, let uh, W E prime be uh, uh, W0 semi-direct product with T of L. Okay, W zero also acts on the weight lattice. Uh, if when L prime is L, I'm just use I'm just defining the same group. If L prime is P check and L is P, then W zero also acts on P, and we can dually form this uh, this extended affine while group. And uh, note that uh, uh, W E uh, permutes permutes S, and dually W E prime permutes uh, S prime. Um, yeah, please keep in mind that S and S prime are the uh, set of affine roots uh, that we, we talked about here. It's not the set of affine simple reflections because in that case, WE will not preserve the... Uh, okay, okay. Um, and okay, so we we consider this. Uh, so to to construct the double affine braid group, I have to consider this this uh, uh, this object. So let lambda be L plus uh, uh, Z C naught, where uh, C naught is E inverse C. C is the constant function. C is the constant function one. Okay, and uh, so we shall uh, so the so we shall regard elements of lambda as uh, functions on V. Uh, so basically, if f is in lambda, uh, so f is uh, lambda plus uh, r. C naught, where lambda is in L and R is in Z, then uh, f of x is uh, lambda. Lambda is in L, so lambda of x, uh, or rather, I should write this as uh, the pairing between. Uh, is the pairing between lambda x plus uh, e inverse R for for x in P. Okay, and uh, 
um, note. So you can think of, yeah, so I had this notation last time, F was the set of affine linear functions on P. So you can, so lambda is basically contained in F, which I had introduced in the first lecture. This is V plus R times C. Okay, note that uh, lambda is stable uh, under the action of, uh, of, uh, of we so basically to see this uh, if uh, I'll, I'll just quickly give the proof uh, if uh, this is up just about unraveling the the action that we had discussed in the first lecture if w is in w e uh, write uh, w as v times say t lambda prime where uh, v belongs to w zero and lambda prime belongs to the lattice L prime, which is P check for us in both the cases we are in. And um, uh, let uh, F be equals lambda plus R times C naught in this lattice lambda, which is sitting inside F uh, with R is in Z. Um, then for, for X in V, uh, WF of X is, f of w inverse x, uh, right, which is f of v inverse x uh, minus lambda prime, uh, the translation that uh, that occurs in w. And uh, by, by, by the way we are thinking about f as an affine linear function on v, this is basically uh, the pairing between, uh, uh, yeah, f, f is lambda plus r c naught, then this is lambda, uh, and v inverse x minus lambda prime uh, plus e inverse r, which is, uh, uh, yeah, I can write this as v lambda x uh, plus r minus, uh, um, uh, let's see, I hope I... R minus um, e inverse. Uh, sorry, what is it? E inverse, right? E inverse. What? What? Yeah, yeah. And the, and the inverse is outside the parenthesis. Parenthesis. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let. Sorry. Let. I, I'm messing up some arithmetic. Just give me a minute. Okay. So let me just try to write this carefully. Uh, okay. So this is this plus e inverse r minus lambda lambda prime. Okay. So that is okay. So. So basically, what does this tell me? That WF is uh, V lambda uh, plus uh, R minus E times lambda lambda prime times C naught. Recall that C naught is E inverse C. Okay. So I have just factored out the E inverse. Uh, okay. So this is the action. And note that uh, this... Now, lambda belongs to L, lambda prime belongs to L prime, and E times L, L prime is contained in Z. That is how we, con cons that was our choice of E, right? Uh, this, this is E, okay? So, uh, so, so, so this tells me that uh, WF also belongs to lambda, okay? So, this is basically the key lemma that will allow us to construct the uh, uh, double affine braid group. So, I have an action of the extended affine while group on this lattice lambda, which is contained in the set of affine linear functions on B. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Um, now, uh, Rick, uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, so WF belongs to lambda, finishing the proof of the lemma. Okay, now recall that, uh, yeah, recall that uh, we defined, uh, we defined the braid group, uh, the extended affine braid group BE. Uh, uh, it is generated by uh, 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 B naught, which is the finite, uh, braid group, the, uh, the braid group attached to the finite while group and the lattice Y L prime uh, subject to the relations, sorry, Y L prime subject to relations. If, uh, if lambda prime in L prime and uh, I in I naught is such that, that uh, 
lambda prime and alpha i is zero, then uh, T i uh, inverse y lambda prime T i is y lambda prime. And if uh, lambda prime alpha i is one, then uh, T i y s i of lambda prime T i is y lambda prime. We proved this these two relations last time, and uh, we also proved the uh, uh, proved the Lustig's relation, which gave the corresponding analog in the affine Hecke algebra. But anyway, for the braid group, we proved these relations. And uh, so, yeah, we, we the basically what we have to do is we we have to iterate this construction. We have to iterate uh, this construction. Uh, to get the double affine braid group to to form the uh, the double affine braid group. So let uh, uh, let lambda be this group that we considered earlier, right? This is uh, L plus. Uh, yeah, lambda is this group. Uh, is this lattice? Sorry, lambda is this lattice, and let. Uh, uh, let x lambda be the set of all x to the power, I'll write it as x f, where f is in lambda, uh, uh, be a multiplicative group, isomorphic to oh, lambda, uh, so that uh, x f times x g is x f plus g, and x f inverse is x minus f for uh, f g in in lambda okay now uh, the double affine braid group the double affine braid group uh, it's usually denoted as b tilde is generated by uh, uh, b e the extended uh, uh, affine braid group and this x lambda uh, subject to relations uh, for for i in i uh, and uh, and f in lambda. Uh, let me make sure I don't have typos here. Uh, uh, f in lambda such that uh, f alpha i uh, prime is zero uh, t i x f uh, t i inverse is x f okay and uh, for for i in i and uh, sorry and f in lambda such that uh, f alpha i prime is one, you set uh, t i x f t i is x s i f. Note that, uh, okay, so, uh, the, so here if, yeah, so, okay, so when I state the du duality theorem, I guess it'll be clear. Note that, the role that ti is whatever ti is doing to the x lambda ti inverse is doing the same thing to y lambda okay so if you look at these relations uh, basically this one and compare it to this one okay so the ti inverse x sif ti uh, inverse is xf okay so i had also sent a supplement about this uh, left uh, extended affine braid group and right extended affine braid group, right? So yeah, yeah. Anyway, so and uh, and the third thing is for for uh, u in this group omega, uh, which is p check mod uh, l prime mod q check, and uh, f in uh, lambda, t u x f t u uh, inverse is uh, x u dot f. Okay. Uh, note that these these things in view of the lemma that we proved uh, w act w e acts on lambda. Uh, so I, I know how to make sense of these expressions. Uh, 
okay uh, and uh, uh, okay and uh, let let q not be uh, x uh, c not which is uh, which belongs to x lambda then and uh, let q be uh, x to the power x to the power c which is q not to the power e where uh, uh, yeah e is as before uh, right uh, so uh, c not is e inverse c okay um, so q not to the power e is x to the power c um, and uh, we have Uh, so if you so I have written what WF does uh, what is WF right I have basically written out the formula for WF. Now if I take f to be the constant function c naught and apply that formula you can check that uh, t i x to the c naught t i inverse is x c naught and uh, t u x uh, c naught t u inverse is x to the u dot c naught which is x c naught okay so so what does this tell me this implies that q naught is central in uh, in b tilde okay q, uh, q q naught is x to the power c naught this anyway commutes with every element in x lambda and we just check that it commutes with every element in b e as well okay so from there uh, b recall that b e we had two presentations for b e one was this using this t naught through t n and then this group omega right we we discussed the two presentations so if you use those generators and these two conditions basically tell us that uh, x to the power c naught commutes with everything in the in the double affine break group so q naught is central in b tilde okay and uh, yeah okay and let uh, uh, I'll just introduce one more notation. I had x lambda, but I can also denote xl, which is the set of all x lambda, uh, lambda in L. Okay, so then the claim is a uh, claim. Uh, this is, uh, you can, we can, we can in fact state it as a presentation for the double affine break group. B tilde is generated uh, by by the groups uh, b not b not uh, x l y l prime uh, and the central element q not subject to the relations. Okay, so I will have a, 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 a long list of relations. Okay, so one, um, for, for i in i and i not equal to zero, so I'm looking at the finite simple reflections, okay? If i is not zero, that means we are looking at the finite simple reflections. And lambda prime in L prime, uh, if, uh, if lambda prime alpha i, sorry, uh, oh, oh, I don't, uh, if lambda prime alpha i is zero, then uh, t i y minus lambda prime t i is uh, y minus lambda prime um, uh, b lambda prime alpha i, if it is one, then uh, t i uh, y minus lambda prime t i is y minus s i lambda prime. Um, two. Yeah. Something is wrong. Sorry, is there an inverse somewhere? Uh, no. Uh, oh, yeah. Here. Uh, in the 
first one first one the second one doesn't have an inverse if the if lambda prime alpha is zero then ti commutes with minus y lambda y minus lambda prime so the first one will have an inverse the second one doesn't yeah okay uh uh, yeah, I, I, okay. And uh, two, two for, for, for I in I, uh, I not equal to zero and lambda in L, uh, uh, lambda alpha I prime is zero, then uh, Ti X lambda Ti inverse is X lambda. As I had mentioned earlier, uh, whatever ti does to x lambda, ti does the same thing to y minus lambda. That, that is how we are getting these relations. Okay, b, uh, if lambda alpha i equals uh, 1, then um, ti x lambda ti is, uh, is this correct? Uh, let me check. Uh, X S I lambda. Uh, yeah, whatever T I does to X. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I think this is okay. Um, Uh, uh, let me make sure one second. Uh, yeah, okay. So yeah, this is correct. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, three, uh, uh, T naught X lambda, uh, T naught is Q inverse uh, X, S phi lambda, uh, where uh, when uh, lambda in L is such that uh, lambda phi prime is minus one. Um, for uh, T naught X lambda uh, is. Uh, is x, lam x lambda t naught when uh, lambda in L is such that uh, lambda phi prime is, is zero. And uh, the last thing we have is um, pu uh, x lambda, oh, sorry. Tu x lambda, sorry, yeah. In, in three, when you say Q inverse, you mean Q naught to the minus E, right? In terms of the yeah, Q is uh, yeah, Q is Q naught to the power E. So yeah. Q inverse is Q naught to the power minus E. Absolutely. Okay. 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 Uh, I think when you go to affine Hecke algebras, you will eventually specialize this to a complex number. And so any, anyway, yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah. Okay. A anyway, yeah. So T U X lambda T U uh, inverse is q to the minus lambda v of pi. Uh, I'll introduce the notation here, x v inverse lambda for, for lambda in L. Okay, so here I have to say what t u and t naught are. Uh, so here, if you write your u, which is a priori an element of omega, uh, yeah, I didn't even say that. So yeah, for, for u in omega which is p check mod q check. I can, if I write this as say uh, t of uh, pi times uh, v inverse, then um, uh, then u v is t of pi. And uh, th this is a length additive expression. So t u is uh, uh, y, okay, maybe I should use a prime here. Uh, y uh, pi prime times t uh, of v inverse. 
Okay, so this is T U and uh, T naught is the one for the affine simple reflection. So this is uh, Y phi check times uh, uh, T S phi uh, inverse. So I proved this also last time. T naught times T S phi is Y phi check. Uh, that's uh, because again, that is a length additive expression. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, uh, so basically, uh, so uh, one is basically contained in BE. The 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 extended affine braid group BE already contains the relations one. Uh, so two is basically what I uh, what we have introduced in B tilde two three and four. Uh, yeah, two th two to five are basically what we introduced in B tilde. Okay, so. Uh, uh, a few maybe uh, okay so uh, a few comments one uh, if uh, if if uh, if omega is trivial then uh, then basically you don't have phi phi is absent right because uh, yeah omega is trivial so there is no phi and if omega is non trivial then we can we can get uh, uh, three and four uh, using uh, using two and five. Okay, so maybe let me show how one one of these relations hold. Maybe let me maybe try to show this. Uh, okay, so and then I will explain why three and four follow from say two and five. So. Um, So if I write uh, uh, f as so my, so to, let's let's see phi. Let us say prove phi. I mean I just want to calculate. Uh, so yeah, I, I just have to show that this relation gives me uh, phi. Okay, so that's what I have to show. But that is just a consequence of this lemma that we proved. So let f be uh, say lambda. Then we prove that. Uh, U F is uh, um, uh, I gave down I gave you the formula for uh, U F right uh, so if you write that down this is uh, V inverse T of lambda minus E times uh, lambda V of pi prime and uh, times uh, C naught okay so uh, let me just scroll up to the formula that I gave. Um, yeah, this is the formula. I'm just using this formula. Okay, if I write my W as uh, uh, V times T lambda, I have written it the other way for, uh, yeah. So my U, uh, yeah. So here, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so basically uh, U is T, T of pi prime times V inverse, which is V inverse times T of V pi prime. Okay, so if I use this expression for you and uh, calculate what I get from that formula there, then uh, uh, I get this, and then x u dot f is uh, um, yeah uh, e times c naught is c, so that is q to the power minus lambda v of pi prime, and then x v inverse lambda okay so that was my relation phi oh yeah i had a pi prime here sorry okay so in the same way you can uh, you can show i mean you just have to calculate what those relations mean in the under these conditions and then you get these relations uh, in the in the double affine braid group and uh, uh, okay so now i won't let us see why so also so let us go back to so which is um, T U X F T U inverse. Okay, so I we basically verified phi, and uh, you can similarly verify the other ones, I guess. Okay, and I so okay, so let me go back to this comment. Um, so if uh, okay, uh, yeah, if uh, if omega is not one then we know that uh, uh, omega permutes 
basically the walls of the alcove, so it permutes the uh, fine simple reflections. S naught through Sn. And, uh, and one more uh, fact is that when, uh, when omega is non-trivial, so basically you, uh, the, the, the orbit containing S naught will also contain an, a finite simple reflection. This is part of, uh, uh, okay. So, and, uh, and uh, the orbit containing S naught will also contain a finite simple reflection. This is one of the features of this uh, group omega. So what you do is if you know phi and if you know one for all the, uh, sorry, if you know phi and if you know two, so you basically know it for omega and you know it for all the finite simple reflections. And you know that you can get your affine simple reflection P naught by from a finite simple reflection and an element of U. Okay, so that, so that is it. So, so since, uh, since so, so S naught is uh, basically U SI U inverse for some uh, U in omega and SI in uh, SI a finite simple reflection. Uh, okay, so basically you can conjugate. Uh, yeah, so I guess conjugate uh, two by uh, PU or PU inverse or something, and then you can and get uh, two and three from, uh, sorry, three and four from one and five to get uh, three, uh, three and four from, uh, from one and five. Okay. Um, Okay, so now I, I want to uh, uh, state this duality theorem. Okay, uh, let uh, uh, a duality theorem. Um, let, uh, let B tilde prime uh, be the group uh, obtained from uh, from uh, B tilde by by interchanging the roles of uh, of L and L prime. Okay, then theorem. There is an anti isomorphism. Um, omega of uh, B tilde prime onto uh, onto B tilde, in which um, x lambda prime lambda prime in L prime uh, y lambda lambda in L and uh, Ti i not equal to zero. And uh, and Q naught are uh, are respectively mapped uh, to uh, y minus lambda prime uh, x minus lambda uh, ti and Q naught. Um, okay, uh, 
okay so let me uh, sort of reduce myself to proving uh, do i have okay yeah. so let me quickly sort of explain what the uh, two relations are that need to be proved and then i'll give you a reference either uh, mcdonald or uh, uh, hayman do it in general and then you can also look at this paper of ram and go for uh, for in gln if you're interested okay so let uh, let zai and r uh, be such that uh, Zai prime is the is the highest root of R prime. So, uh, so either Zai is equal to phi if R prime is R, or uh, or Zai is the uh, highest uh, short root of R. Uh, if uh, R prime equals R dual, which is not equal to R. Okay. Um, so in B tilde prime, uh, T naught is replaced by this element, Y xi prime dual, T of uh, S xi uh, inverse. And, uh, um, and the elements of uh, omega, which is and u in p check mod q check, which is which we wrote as the t of pi u prime times uh, v u prime v u inverse uh, as an element of p check semi-direct product w zero. Now b tilde will contain elements in p uh, p mod q, uh, right? Which is um, uh, T of pi uh, u times v u prime inverse uh, in p semi direct product w zero. Okay, and uh, so basically T u prime T u prime is y pi u prime times uh, T of v u prime inverse, right? Uh, completely analogous to what we had earlier. So under uh, under omega. The, this anti-isomorphism between B tilde and B tilde prime, the images of these elements are uh, the images of these elements are uh, uh, T naught star, which is uh, T of uh, S xi inverse times X minus uh, xi prime dual. Uh, yeah, because uh, x lambda prime goes to y minus lambda prime, y lambda goes to minus x lambda and so on. And it is an anti-isomorphism. So it is this. And t, I guess, u prime is t of uh, v u prime inverse. inverse, And then x, uh, uh, y, sorry. Uh, yeah, x. Uh, minus by u prime. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have it right. Okay, and uh, so we so we basically need to show. So we need to show uh, that in. I mean, if uh, if. To prove this duality, this these are the two relations that need to be proved. Uh, T naught star uh, y uh, lambda prime T naught star is uh, Q inverse y s xi lambda prime. If so, for all lambda prime in L prime such that uh, lambda prime xi is uh, is um, uh, is one, is one and uh, uh, yeah, the other one is when it is zero. So T naught star Y lambda prime is Y lambda prime T naught star for all lambda prime in L prime uh, with lambda prime Xi equals uh, zero. And uh, these are these for these are for the T naught star and then you have uh, one for the T U. T u prime y lambda prime T u prime inverse is q to the minus 
lambda prime uh, pi u uh, pi u prime and uh, uh, y uh, v u prime lambda prime. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, the, so these yeah, so basically you have to prove these these relations for the images of these elements under this uh, under this omega to prove this duality theorem, and uh, so there are a few references for this. McDonald uh, does this case by uh, there is some case by there are two cases for McDonald basically uh, r prime equals r and uh, r prime not equals r. And then there is also a paper by Mark Heyman, uh, basically reduce it to the case uh, of the uh, of uh, 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 the uh, unextended, I guess, unextended double affine break group. Uh, so basically, the weight lattice and the co-weight lattice get replaced by the uh, root lattice and the co-root lattice. And then uh, you can also look at Ram and go for the case of uh, GLN, uh, for, for GLN. Okay, so I'll not discuss the proof of this, but uh, it essentially amounts to proving these relations, uh, which, which is done in, I guess, for McDonald, I guess this is sections 3.6 and 3.7. Okay, in the in the last uh, few minutes I have, I just want to sort of unravel this presentation for for GLN. So unraveling this for uh, for for GLN using using this reference. So you can look at theorem uh, five point two of their uh, of their uh, paper. Um, so, okay, one remark is when, when working with GLN, uh, you have to replace the weight lattice and the co-weight lattice by the uh, character lattice and the co-character lattice. P, P, should be, uh, P should be replaced by uh, X upper star T, which is uh, epsilon 1 through say epsilon n and uh, q p check should be replaced by by x lower star t which is uh, epsilon 1 check to epsilon n check okay so i'll just write down uh, the theorem we can we will be able to see that these relations are uh, uh, are there in the braid group, and then uh, I guess you can uh, one has to prove exhaustion. Okay, so uh, Q then is uh, epsilon one minus epsilon two, and so on. Epsilon n minus one minus epsilon n, and uh, Q check is uh, epsilon one check minus epsilon two check, and so on. Epsilon n minus one check minus epsilon n check, and uh, omega is x lower star t mod q check here it is isomorphic to z which is generated by t epsilon 1 dual times uh, s1 through sn uh, this was one of the uh, exercises i guess last time and uh, omega prime which is x upper star t mod q uh, yeah um, which is also isomorphic to Z given by T epsilon one times S one through S N. And then um, the, the group uh, B uh, G L N tilde uh, is presented by uh, generators. So what I had discussed earlier is the analog of the Bernstein presentation. Um, uh, uh, okay, so maybe let me write this down. Press, uh, okay, generators Q naught, I guess, uh, and then uh, G. Um, T naught, T1 through uh, Tn minus 1 now, and 
x epsilon 1, x epsilon n, uh, and the relations in B are, uh, uh, Okay, so you have the braid relations, which in their notation is basically drawing this picture, I guess. I, I just learned that. Okay. Um, so you have T1, T2, T3, and so on. Tn minus one, and this is T naught. So when you have a, uh, yeah, so what this means is uh, Ti, Ti plus one, Ti is Ti plus one, Ti, Ti plus one, if the roots are uh, adjacent. Otherwise, uh, ti tj is tj ti if uh, j not equal to i or i plus one okay so you have the braid relations and then uh, you know how the group omega acts on this uh, as you know omega sends uh, the action of omega the action of the generator t epsilon one check times uh, s1 through sn sends uh, si to si plus one uh, we, we 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 know that so um, so this yields the relation g t i g inverse is uh, t i plus one and then uh, uh, yeah g t n minus one g inverse is t naught and uh, the element uh, q naught which we already and which we we know what it is this belongs to Z of B, G, L, N tilde. And um, uh, then, then you have uh, these elements. They, they, um, oh, sorry, I am confused now, actually. Uh, maybe I wrote this down incorrectly. Uh, just sorry, just give me a second. I, I just have to look at something. Ah, yeah, I did write it down incorrect. And then you have uh, x epsilon i times x epsilon j is x, uh, x epsilon j, x epsilon i, right? Uh, this is the commutativity you have inside x lambda. And then you have, uh, uh, yeah. So so basically, so far we have written down what the relations inside. Uh, so these are basically the relations inside uh, uh, B tilde uh, B G L N, uh, right? The uh, extended affine uh, braid group of uh, G L N. These relations already live there. Now I have to write down the relations that come from the interaction of this. Uh, extended affine braid group with the elements x1 through x epsilon n. So those are the relations that remain to be written down. Uh, so you get uh, g x epsilon i g inverse is Sorry, x epsilon. One small thing. The, in the gti g inverse, can i also be zero there? Uh, yeah, so I have written, yeah, yeah, this this one i can be zero. In the previous i is equal. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no. uh, I uh, sorry. So yeah, uh, yeah, I can be zero. Zero less than or equal to i less than or equal to uh, n minus two, I guess. Yeah, so the omega will basically act like this. It will send this to this, this to this, and so on. And then this one back to this. Right, thanks. thanks. So that will give the, the those relations. Um, and yeah, because uh, omega, the elements of omega have length zero, so you get length additive expressions and then, uh, okay. So, uh, okay, and then you have, uh, um, uh, I, I hope I have not missed, sorry, just give me a minute. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, maybe I'll not write this now. Uh, I'll come to the relations from G later. I still have to uh, write down what the TIs do to these XIs. So TI uh, epsilon X to the epsilon I, TI uh, 
ah yeah ti x to the epsilon i ti is x to the epsilon i plus one this basically comes down to the observation that s um, si of epsilon i is epsilon i plus one so and then uh, uh, yeah and then uh, yeah yeah basically yeah so so uh, so sit epsilon i t of epsilon i is t of epsilon i plus one times si and then these expressions are length additive okay so that will give you this um is this right i hope i got this right um uh, Yeah, the inner product of, of epsilon i with alpha i plus one is one. Okay. And yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is, yeah, I, yeah, it agrees with the, yeah, I have copied it correctly. Okay, so this is one of them. And then you have, um, yeah, so, and then you have ti x epsilon j uh, ti inverse is x, uh, uh, epsilon j when j is not i or i plus one, right? Because then, um, as he just pointed out, the inner product with the uh, epsilon i with the uh, alpha epsilon j with alpha i would be zero. So we will get it from the uh, the other one. And the last thing I have to uh, describe is the is the generate how the elements of omega interact with the interact with these x lambdas so g uh, x epsilon i g inverse uh, is x epsilon i plus one and g x epsilon n g inverse is q inverse x epsilon one again this comes from this relation that we had uh, basically so these uh, so yeah, so for GLN, this is how the, the picture looks. Uh, uh, and uh, if you, you can you can look at uh, their paper theorem 5.2 also states the dual version of this. What, what happens when you look at D, uh, when X lambda is replaced by Y minus lambda and Y lambda is replaced by X minus lambda. So you get an analogous uh, set of uh, generators and relations. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'll stop here. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, is there any questions? Question? Okay. Uh, what is the root system for GLN? Type A, right? I'm looking at type A. What it, I mean, uh, so it is same as what you described last time, an minus one. Uh, yeah, an minus one, except that the vector space, I'm v is now uh, rn, not the hyperplane. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Q check means uh, span of the co roots, right? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. The z span of the co roots. Oh. So Only epsilon that. one minus epsilon two check would be uh, epsilon one minus epsilon two, right? Yeah, but I'm using the notation. Uh, what would what, what? Yeah, I mean, if you're, you're going to identify yeah. uh, alpha check with uh, two alpha over inner product of alpha alpha, then what you say is right. If I if you do this identification. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not yeah. identifying. Uh, yeah, I have denoted my x lower star t with epsilon one check to epsilon n check. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, if we identify, it will confuse a lot because we need two set of generators. Yeah, because the x minus epsilon i and the y epsilon i play different roles in the uh, right uh, in the relations and the generators in the relation. So you can look at their uh, paper. It is the the section five has all these things worked out very well. Uh, Any 
any more uh, questions comments okay if not uh, this is uh, radhika's uh, last lecture so let's thank uh, Uh, stop the recording. Yeah, if you want to discuss, we can discuss.